choice in the office bed. he came into Bright House here, I, I took care of it. Would you say you were a friend of his? Yeah, he's a nice man. I like him. Listen carefully and answer what I ask. Are you a friend of Ben Rowan? Yes. Okay. I hear that he's a drunk. He wouldn't be here at Bright House otherwise. That's who's here, alcoholic. So then you agree, he is a drunk? Absolutely. Now, just so there's no question who we're talking about, Ben Rowan, the movie star, right? You're his friend, and you say he's a drunk. But that's what I'm telling you, as his friend. Ben Rowan, the movie star, is a drunk. We got that sucker cold. You called yourself a psychic. Now, 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 you listen to me, Hustetter. I got my rump on the line. I need 20 story ideas by half past five. I'm only got 14 so far. What do you mean you don't have any emanations? Get one! 
fly you to Monaco? Are you crazy? What do I care where she died? Listen, Hofstetter, she was an American before she was a princess. Well, I don't need her Monacan aura. You mean the sand doesn't remember her in Malibu? I'll call you back. Get on this. I want you to take a look at this. This is the front page that increased our circulation for over 500,000 just this week. But take another look at it. Because this is what our paper is all about. When you live a life where you have to account for every penny that you spend, where your husband comes home at night and he falls asleep looking at television because he's tired and because, well, because he hasn't anything to talk about, then your life is gray. Your life is made of straw. You want color, you want excitement. You want to go to far off places where only the rich go and where the famous of the world live. You hunger and you thirst for the true lives of the glamorous, of the important. Not your Uncle Phil nor Aunt Beatrice because you know everything there is to know about their lives. And what they do doesn't thrill you or excite you. It doesn't make your life richer. So you go into a supermarket and after you buy your orange and your steak, which you need because your belly is empty, you stand before the rack where the tabloids are because it's your whole life that is empty. Now, you can have a choice of any one of the publications on that rack, but you want value for your money. And this page has got that value. This is the page that wins the war. This page pleases me. Good work, Simon. That's all for now. Thank you. You know, Rowan and North are making a new picture together. Really? Yes, a $25 million budget. Do you have anybody inside? Not yet. Let me know when you do. to get to gate 112 and catch my flight to New York. Helen, we were supposed to have two hours together. I know, but everything changed in Hong Kong. It's my deadline. I have to make this connection. It's not fair. No. She's not going to eat with us. Let's just get her to the gate on time and get rid of her. Don't ever touch a star, Helen. There, these are for you. It's a budget of 25 million. 25? A modest little movie? What's it about? Sex. With your own husband? Yeah, it takes some of the fun out of it, but uh, the pay is good. Oh, thank you, darling. Too kind. Next, please. Helen Grant. Mm -hmm. Maybe she can't find it and you'll have to stay. Oh, great. Why don't you stay? I know, I know. You can't stay. Look, they 
thank you. <gasps> oh, <laughs> have a nice flight. <laughs> oh, we're, 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 we're boarding right now. <laughs> They're very close personal friends. <laughs> This is the really interesting story, the best for last. I mean, it's got elements like she's up for murder now. But in the beginning, she had a very even disposition. I mean, I, she was really sweet. Uh, she weighed 609 pounds exactly to start with. We're taking out. Up there on the platform, you know, in the carnival. She was very sweet, but she couldn't get a date. So she sent for this diet. She lost over 300 pounds in 18 months. I mean, her whole metabolism changed. She lost pound after pound, and she could eat anything. I, I, you know, the carnival fired her. So she enrolled in a secretarial school to learn typing and shorthand. By this time, she weighs only 180 pounds, and she gets a crush on the guy sitting next to her in class. Naturally, you guessed it, he can't see her for chicken fat. Dust. One day, she takes her courage in her hands. She passes him a note. If he would like to go to the movies with her, she'll pay for both of them. He sends her back a note. Sorry, I don't date fatties. At this moment, all she weighs is 181 pounds. Skin and bones. Something broke inside of her. She went out. She got a gun. She came back. She shot him right in the shorthand class. I mean, she killed him. It all came out of the trial. Now, how do you intend to handle it? I how about diet turns ex-fatty into killer? I don't need your help. I see it as a biography with a weak sample diet in a box. I like his idea better. Work on it. Do I get a cold byline? You get rat poison. Very competitive woman. Okay. Platt took these at the airport this afternoon. The one on the right is Helen Grant. I had research run a quick background on her. She was North's roommate at college. Obviously still very close. Yes, all three of them. It's even better than just two women. And she writes. It's made to order. Troy's in bed, all's well. I made the cab wait for you. Oh, thank you. Don't really relish looking for a taxi in this neighborhood so late at night. Here. Oh, no, 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 you mustn't pay me. Nannies will bill you, you know. This is just for you, from me to you. And this is for the taxi. Thank you. Messages are by the phone. Mail's on the table right there, and I think that's about it. Good night. Good night. I'd just like to tell you, Troy was a wonderful baby, and he's becoming a fine young man. You have a lot to be proud of. I am proud. Thank you. Good night. Well, be careful now. Oh, don't worry, I will.
was waiting for you. Mrs. Helen Grant? Speaking. My name is Harold Fallon. I'm the publisher of Inside World. Yes? Are you familiar with Inside World? I know what it is. We'd like you to come to work for us, Mrs. Grant. Oh, I'm afraid I'm not interested. We can offer you $65,000 a year plus expenses to start. And a generous allowance to cover the cost of moving to the West Coast. No, thank you. Thanks a lot. But no, thank you. May I ask why not? I told you, I know what your paper is. Hi. prepared to go to 70000 a year on your starting salary, and I'll go another 5000 on top of that at the end of the first year. The answer is still no. Please don't call again. I'm going to bed. Good night. I guess we'll just have to make her an offer she can't refuse. <laughs> about a deadline. Things change. I've got a commitment on a book. And not until the article's in print. I got a $5,000 advance writing on it. Oh, I'm not going to turn the copyright back to you before I print the article. I need money now. We bought the article and you were paid for it. It's not spent. It's always spent before you get it. And you know it. Listen, hon, I got my own problems. We locked into a deal with Norman Naylor for 100,000 words. Five parts, 20,000 words an issue. Now, I need the room. I can't hold Naylor back. I can't get you in. Who do I send my landlord to? You or Norman? If you have an idea for another article, I'll let you have 500 in advance. nice seeing you, Stanley. Thanks. Thanks a lot.
It's not too great. We're not going to run the article until next year. You going to tell me what happened? A couple of guys run my lunch. Did they get it? Yeah. Why don't you just give it to them in the first place? Better if you make them hassle for them. You have the time to lose your alone. If they don't like it, if that's your work for it, might as well get a job. Whatever happened to the good old American work ethic? You know what we're having for dinner tonight, don't you? I told you. Is this stove fixed? You want me to ring that up? No. No. Sorry. my time like this, I'm going to send you a bill. I'm always willing to pay for the cost of business. And it's clear we can't do this on the telephone. On the phone or off. Why do you want to fly out here and talk to me for a couple of hours? What? You tell me how much it will cost me and when you can come. And I'll have a messenger at your door in 15 minutes with the money and a first-class round-trip plane ticket. What do you want me for? Ah, uh, that's what I want to talk to you about. Just tell me what your time is worth. $2,500. Done. I want to be there by tomorrow morning and back here by tomorrow night. That's fine. No strings. I warn you right now, I'm going to say no. You don't even know what I have to offer you. Whatever it is. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. your paper, Mr. Fallen, because it's garbage. <laughs> well, garbage is a harsh word. Can we compromise? How about vulgar? <laughs> well, it's also vulgar. What do you want to hire me for? I run a tabloid, and I compete with other tabloids. Now, you may not believe this, but I can't do that without good writers. Well, how do you know what kind of writer I am? Well, semi-literate. I read other publications besides my own. I picked up a copy of Lifestyle, and I read your Bag Lady article. I liked it. You write well. Oh, thank you, Mr. Fallon. It's very flattering. Now, can we get to the point? What this is about is exciting work, a comfortable lifestyle and a pleasant climate, and $80,000 a year. That's a lot of money. I like to think I pay my people well. And when you're on assignment, we pay all expenses. And that includes a company credit card, so you never have to lay out any of your own cash. Mr. Fallon, you've got the wrong person. Why? Are you unkind to little children and small animals? <laughs> have you ever been to Santa Barbara? We sell four and a half million copies of Inside World every week. That doesn't change what it is. Well, the world doesn't belong just to college graduates. I put out a newspaper for people who never went to Yale or Harvard or Caltech. Never had the chance to go to any college. And they happen to be the majority in this country. 
Now, the fact that they buy their newspaper, my newspaper in the supermarket, doesn't make them any of the less important. Mm, the new elite. Mrs. Grant, you're a snob. How would you like to put up money that your bag lady never bought a copy of Lifestyle and read what you wrote about it? But if you wrote the same article for me and I published it in Inside World, she would have read it. You can give odds on that. But maybe that's not important to you. Job. No, but you can rent it if you like. It's available. Do you own it? I picked up the key from the real estate agent. You're trying to seduce me. I want to make it possible for you to work for me. annoyed with myself. I find your offer very attractive. And what are you afraid of? The money's great. I'm just not the kind of lady who can laugh all the way to the bank. I like to be able to look at myself in the mirror in the morning. You can have both. Ah, oh, come on. If I work for you, when's the next time I write a true word? Are you going to tell me I'm jumping at shadows? You're the one who does the writing. I just sit at my desk and wait for you to bring it to me. I'm in your hands. I'm at your mercy. Why do I find it so hard to believe you? My name is Harold Fallen. I'm the publisher of Inside World. This is June the 9th, 1984. I'm dictating this as an irrevocable stipulation in a contract between myself and Mrs. Helen Grant. I haven't agreed to make a contract with you. If Mrs. Grant should agree to sign a contract with us, it will be part of that agreement that in carrying out her assignment for Inside World, she will write only the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. She will not be required to withhold or distort information of any kind. And if she does so, that will mean the dissolution of this contract. But if she carries out the terms of this agreement and writes nothing but the truth, this contract cannot be revoked or canceled before it's term.
been in the picture as much as you do. But facts. I'm trying to deal with facts. How about this fact? I won't do it without him. I'm not going to put him in the picture without insurance on him. You can him. get insurance on him. If I want to pay $800,000 for it, what happens to us if he goes on a binge for a week? He is not drinking. He is off the sauce. We sauce. are talking about production cost of $200,000 a day, Meg. Whether we shoot that day or whether we just sit around waiting for somebody to sober up. He's sober and he's staying sober. Okay. Okay. You want me to accept that? I accept it. Let's talk about Ben's health. You want to talk about the health of his liver? You want to talk about the health of his heart? I'm sorry to be this blunt. What do I do if he drops dead three weeks into shooting? Three weeks is four million dollars. Do I just eat it? You want to take a look at his medical report? I won't do it without him. We can make the picture without Ben, Meg. I can get the money. But we can't make it without you. It's not bankable without you. Then don't do it. Meg, who in his right mind is going to pay a premium of $800,000 for Ben? I will. I'll pay. You can take it out of my salary. That solve your problems? It does. If you put it in writing. What do you think I'm up here doing with you, Paul? Playing games? You think I'm playing games with you? I'll do any damn thing you want. Okay. Paul, this is between you and me. Men's not to know, and neither is the street. He's not going to find out anything from me. Andrea, head this confidential. Three copies. Today's date, to whom it may concern. I hereby agree to assign all or any part of the salary due me for my services on the motion picture now titled Adam Loves Annie as required in payment of the premium for completion insurance in connection with the services of Mr. Ben Rowan on that film. The signature is for Miss North. Put my signature on it as a witness and your own signature as the second witness. All copies back to me. Do you want to have your lawyer take a look at it first? Is it satisfactory to you? It does everything I want it to do. Then it's fine with me. is the one you have to look out for. Yeah, I've noticed. What are you doing? Just trying to see where the world goes to. Looks like you had an interesting day. You're looking
looking at the Ben Rowan Memorial Highway. Memory of what? Whiskey I have known. That's a lot of bottles. I'm off to last a year. Maybe more. Where'd they all come from? Just call up the liquor store. And you say, send over some booze. And they say, how much do you want? And you say, what I get from you last year. That's how much I want. A long year last year. Just your regular 365 days. Not even a leap year. This is scary. It scares the hell out of me. Want to see a present? Good morning. I have an assignment for you. Now? Right now, I'm afraid. A helicopter is picking up two boys, Siamese twins. Mr. Fallen, I'm in the middle of moving in. Everything is in the middle of everything else. No, guy's not there. I beg your pardon? Mr. Fallen, the house is a mess. My son is in school. You're asking me to have him come home to a new house with me not there. Well, that's what you have a housekeeper for. Hey, yo, guys! No, 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 no. Back. No, I want this around. Mrs. Sky? Oh. Mrs. Sky, could you please put things in order? Surely. Thank you. Why don't we move that parallel to the terrace doors facing in? chance we got if we could just save one of them. Let the doctor alone. Let him do what he has to. Let's get him to the 
the hospital. Are you safe with both of them? You hear me? interviewing the parents. When? When what? You mean you want me to interview the parents now? Yeah, what do you think I brought you out here for? No way! I thought that's what you're good at, interviews. For God's sake, give them a minute to their own grief. No, no. You get them when their defenses are down. That's when you get blood. I don't work like that. <sighs> Listen, when you're with me, you take my orders and you carry them out. Or what? I get court-martialed and shot? You get paid for work. You don't do your work. You're a thief. questions about your children. <clears throat> We're not just in the mood to talk to reporters right now. You can understand that, can't you? We just took a terrible loss. Don't you want people to know how you feel? Those that have children of their own who know how we feel. Right, and those are the people that need you the most. I mean, how do they feel? Worrying about their own children. You've been through this. What about them? Maybe he's right, honey. so low right now. Talk to this young woman. She'll tell your story to the world. I'll wait for you out. 
suicide. I don't want to intrude on these people's grief. <laughs> Disappointed, Simon. It's a good picture. You'll give me a picture of two boys in two coffins. Now, what is this to do with Simon's twins? Well, that's the way they are now. Are you telling me we don't have a story? No, Mr. Fallon, but we have to deal with reality. They were separated by surgery. Then unseparate them. That ought to wake him up. That's the idea, isn't it? Sleeping. It's the middle of the night. What do you want? I want to help you. And I want to help those boys of yours. My boys are dead. What are you talking about? Well, I don't want to see them put into the ground in those pine boxes. They deserve better. How would you like to see them in a bronze coffin? They'll play just as quiet in pine. I am going to get you the best coffin you ever saw. And I'd like to give you and your wife some money besides. Well, what do you want to give me money for? I want you to sign a paper. What kind of paper? Well, it's a release. To do what? To photograph your boys. Well, you took your photographs before and I didn't sign no paper. I know, but this is an exclusive. Here, read it. Well, <clears throat> I don't uh, have my glasses. Uh, why don't you read it to me? Um, I hereby grant to the publication Inside World all rights to publish from this day forward to the end of the universe 
the photographs to your indiscretion. Mr. You got to get God to sign that. You want a thousand dollars? Come around in the daylight like honest people. What's the world coming to? Can't even give money away anymore. Are we gonna go home now? Not McKee. He'll think of something else. Oh, I'm sure he will. Is this the most luxurious one you have? What are you looking for? A coffin or a condominium? <laughs> uh, this one. I didn't think anyone was here. Well, your housekeeper was kind enough to let me wait. She had to take your son to school. I didn't see your car. My chauffeur dropped me off. He'll be back shortly. Uh, coffee? Oh, yeah. Black, please. I had a chance to talk with your son while I was waiting. He was telling me how well he's doing in school. He always has. He's my bright boy. That's beautiful. Little housewarming gift. I hope you'd like it. Thank you. That's good. Oh, I'm so tired. I can imagine. That was a hard assignment. I feel drained. I just want to crawl into bed and go to sleep. You've earned it. But let me lift your day a little. I want to congratulate you on your work. I like your words. It's a good article. I was going to call you, but then I thought, no, I'll come and tell her in person. Thank you. And I have your next assignment. Not today, though. <laughs> no, we'll let you sleep. But I think you're going to like this one. Change your pace. You're going to cover a movie for us. The minute I open my eyes, you got me. It's a big movie. $25 million budget, and it has big stuff. Ben Rowan, Meg North. Did you know that Meg was my roommate in college? Really? Well, that's a bonus. Well, I know Ben, too. Better and better. I think I better pass on this assignment. Did you say pass? I feel a little certain conflict of interest here. Uh, I don't understand. I wouldn't do anything to hurt them. Well, how can you hurt them? You're going to write the story. I'm sure you can find something else for me. Yes, I can. But I'm not going to. This is your assignment. I don't want it. Now, what are you afraid of? I know them well. I'm very fond of them. I don't think I could be objective. I appreciate your concern, but you're a professional writer. I have faith in your objectivity. And if I still say no? Mrs. Grant, you're not a freelance writer anymore. You're a member of my staff. You don't have any choice in your assignments. I'm told this is Ben Rohn's comeback movie. Write a comeback story. 
something nice. I... Another car, another fur coat, another what? Finally, I just uh, asked her what she wanted. She said she wanted me. That wasn't worth three cents, you know, but that's, that's what she wanted, me. So I did what I could. I promised her I'd try not to die carelessly. So, uh, this house doesn't drink anymore. Well, okay. Maybe I can take those, okay? Thanks. Oh, Why didn't you tell me? Tell you what? I filled her in on the backstory. You never said a word. I ran out of words. I would have been here. It's history. Come on, let's change the subject. To friends. Amen. Amen. So, uh, what are you doing in Los Angeles? What am I doing in Los Angeles? Ah, oh, yes. I am writing an article on your picture. Your what? Mm-hmm. It's fabulous. How'd you ever talk lifestyle into that? Well, actually, I'm not doing it for lifestyle. I don't work for lifestyle anymore. And you talk about people not telling you things? What happened? They give you a hard time about the drug article? I'm so glad we're all sitting down because I think this is going to come as a very big surprise. Ladies and gentlemen, I am living in Santa Barbara. Helen! Hey! I took a job with Inside World. You what? I took a job with Inside. Hello? How the hell could you do that? They made me an offer I couldn't refuse. Don't be smart. Hey, 
Are you out of your mind? Do you know what that rag is? Do you know what they do to people? Do you know what they'll make you do? It's not going to make me do anything. I'm a big girl. You're a damn fool. Another country heard from? I want her out of this house. Ben. Get her out of here. Ben. Get her out of here. Ben. You stay right here. What are you doing? I don't want her in this house. What are you talking about? That's not stranger. Tell us. I don't want her here. All right. All right. Calm down. Let's talk. I want her out of my house. It's melodrama. You think that's melodrama than how's this? If she doesn't get out, I will. You think I'm kidding? No, I believe you. Is that Ben or is that you too? That's both of us. What the hell's the matter with you? Why do you think they hired you and put you on our picture except to use your friendship with us? for a guest in the first place. this? I don't think so. You know Ben. <sighs> Once he thinks something, he won't let go. This is... What's gonna happen to you and me? I have to choose, Hal. Yeah. Ben or you. You or Ben. It can't be both. Ben. Just quit there, that's all. Get another job. Oh, that's easy for you. That is so casual. <laughs> There's your house. There's your rolls. Upstairs your jewels and your fur coats. Above it all, not me. I don't have a Rolls Royce. Or jewels or a fur coat. I am not above anything. I have a living to make. I have a child to take care of. I worry that there's food on the table and clothes on his back and a school for him to go to where he will be safe. I don't find it as easy as you do to think about throwing away a job that pays me $80,000 a year. Right. Inside world, $80,000 isn't so dirty if it's for a good cause. Oh, don't you holier than thou me? When's the last time you made a movie with all your clothes on? Very good. Hostetter, the psychic, had a dream about Grace Kelly. He dreamed she was on the beach at Malibu with somebody. She was definitely not by herself. I put an ad in Classified. If you saw Grace Kelly in the last 48 hours, call me Collect. Mr. Fallon? Yes, Simon. I thought Grant was supposed to report to me here today. You mean she didn't come in? No. Thank you. Put me through to Mrs. Grant's house, please. Yes, sir. 
This is the answer we got on the ad. You say you saw Grace Kelly? Yes. Where did you see her? At Malibu. I was walking on the beach. When was this? In the middle of the night. You were walking on the beach in the middle of the night. I have Mrs. Grant's house. Hello. 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 Good morning, Mrs. Skies. Mrs. Grant there. No, she isn't. Can you talk freely? Yes, the boy's in school. When was the last time you saw her? This morning. She left early. She just kissed the boy goodbye and left. I don't know where she went. Well, if she calls again or she comes home, please call me immediately. And it's not necessary for her to know that you're calling me. I'm always discreet, Mr. Foreman. And you know I appreciate it. Oh, yes. You're a very generous man. You were walking on the beach in the middle of the night. How long ago was that? Three nights ago. What happened then? Well, I said to her, Princess Grace? And she said, yes. And I said, what are you doing here, Grace? You died in Monaco in the car. And she said, I felt a longing to see America again. The headline is, Princess Grace still haunts the American land she loved. Use it. make a call to New York, charge it to my home phone in Santa Barbara. This is Stanley Clark. Stan, this is Helen Graham. Yeah? I forgive you. You what? You, f you forgive me? You forgive me for what? Don't you remember what you did? Don't try to lay some kind of guilt trip on me. What you did, you did, not me. I want to come back. Stan? Nobody wants you here. Okay, look, I made a mistake. You bet your boots you did. People make mistakes. And sometimes they don't get forgiven. Now, don't kid yourself, Grant. It's not just me. There isn't a decent magazine in this town that'll pick anybody up from inside world. You're stuck in your cesspool, pal. Mr. Fallon, do you want to talk to Mr. Skye on four? Yes, Mrs. Skye? I haven't heard from Mrs. Grant directly, Mr. Fallon, but I did get a call from the operator a couple of minutes ago. Mrs. Grant made a telephone call to New York and charged it here. Thank you. Hello, research. Jim speaking. Mrs. Grant just made a long-distance telephone call to New York and she charged it to her home phone number. Would you find out who she made that call to? Yes, sir. Now, I want you to listen to this, Mrs. Hurd. This is about the UFO kidnapping we did the story on last February. One moment, please. Thank you. Miss Hummel, may I help you? Well, just for the heck of it, I was wondering, how much is this check in? Oh, this is a special sale today. It's $3,500. Would you like to try it on? Sure. <laughs> oh, it's darling. Suppose I don't have the cash to pay for it. Oh, we'll be glad to take your check. See, I can't wear a coat like this, but you can. It's cool. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> well, I don't suppose I need it right now. Oh, sometimes the important thing is to have something what we don't need. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> Well, I have a company credit card. 
Did you take those? The woman is pregnant. They claim they were married on a spaceship by the aliens. Their bishop says they're lying. He says the child will be born out of wedlock. I would like to tie this whole thing up in a headline that says something like, uh, a bishop decides spaceship baby illegitimate. Mr. Fallon, will you speak to a Miss Hummel of the Hamburg Fur Shop in Beverly Hills? It's about a credit card, she says. Put it through. Go right ahead. Well, what is the problem? All they have Hello, to do is help marry. The problem is the bishop doesn't want to marry them. Well, let them find somebody else. They're a very devout couple. They don't want to get married outside their church. Well, well, what is it she wishes choice. to buy? We're talking about a mink jacket at $3,500. That's the problem. You don't understand. Under a Supreme Court moment, ruling, please. the question of legitimacy... Hold it. Hold it. Are we committed to this? Yes. Didn't we run a positive article in their kidnapping? We certainly did, yes. Then they're as good as married, aren't they? But there's a legal question as to whether an alien has the power to perform a marriage. That's what the bishop is challenging. The bishop is an idiot. If the captain of a vessel can marry people, certainly the master of a spaceship can have at least the same power. More power. His spaceship is farther from shore. Then let's put out all this nonsense. You talk to your people. Tell them to sue the bishop. Dereliction of duty, defamation of character, and see more. Get them a lawyer. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Would you like to talk to Mrs. Grant yourself? No, no, that won't be necessary. You do approve of the use of the credit card, then? We have no problem. Thank you. Any further questions? Yes, Andrea? I'm going to take my lunch now. Is that all right? That's fine. Okay, bye-bye. I can run off a copy without anyone getting suspicious. 300 hours, right? 500. 350. You want to fool around? Forget it. 500 bucks in advance. Keep cool. You got it. I'll call you with the number you gave me as soon as I have the copy run off. Can I want to talk to Simon. Um, he's on another call. Can he call you back? I'm in a hurry. Tell him, tell him this message. Tell him that his copy of the insurance agreement is ready, but not to come himself. My boss might recognize him. Tell him to send somebody else. Your name, please? Don't worry about that. He'll know. with me i mean you come in here at two o'clock in the afternoon you just walk in the door nothing on your mind thank you for the apology thank you for the explanation come on i'm not asking you to do anything out of line i'm not a messenger girl hardly not on your salary why do you think i'm overpaid my dear woman i'm sure that they can't pay you enough i mourn for you my eyes fill with tears. My heart cracks for you. Please, don't bleed on the floor, okay? Listen, you want to go to the mat on this? You want to get into a killing war? How about we call phone on the phone, bring him in as a referee? Huh? I'm sure he'd appreciate it. I know he's got nothing better to do. Essie, get phone on the phone. 
Yes, you don't. Here's the address. Right now. Right? Don't forget to keep the tip. Um, excuse me. Yes. You have something for Simon? Thank you. Andrea, this clause calls for a notification. Are you looking for me? She's, she's in the wrong office. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry I bothered you. Do we ever send this notification? She got it? Well, I checked with Brown's secretary. She swears on her mother that there was a copy of the agreement in it when she turned it over. Can you believe it? The flap was resealed with tape. Well, this is annoying. I'm working on the front page now, but I don't see how we can use the story without documentation. Can you get another copy of that letter? Well, yeah, but it's going to take a little time. The secretary's worried that Grant's going to turn her in. She'd lose her job. She's afraid to make a copy now. I'd have to twist her arm. What happens if they decide to take it public? Suppose they call a general press conference and turn it over to the media from their point of view. Then we lose control of the situation and I'm sitting here with a dead front page. I'd like to see a dead grant. Never break the pieces, Simon. Not until you're sure you don't need them any longer. I think what we have to do now is to find some way to pit the parties against one another. I mean, some way to be sure that the Rollins don't trust her, no matter what Mrs. Grant tells them. Well, thanks, Simon. Thanks for calling. Composing room. Benny, this is Mr. Fallon. I need one copy of a new front page. Come up to my office and I'll tell you what I need. Right away, sir. Yes, Mr. Fallon. I want a motorcycle message. I'll take something to Los Angeles.
Oh, hi, Mr. Rowan. Hi. Please sign here. Sure. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Sure like your pictures. Television. Mr. Rowan had a heart attack. We we're watching the news. It was on the news. Are you all right? Yeah, I guess. Are you gonna be home now? Yeah, I'm here. We were scared something happened to you too. It's okay. I'm here, baby. It's okay. Mr. Fallen's waiting for you. Where is he? He asked to sit by the pool. I have to talk to Mr. Fallen. Okay? Is this bad for us? What do you mean? Do we have to go back to New York now? Go back to New York? Why? Because Ben's dead. What has that got to do with New York? Well, Mrs. Sky said you were working on a story about his movie, him and Meg. How do you know what I'm working on? From Mr. Fallen. When he called here, when he was looking for you this afternoon, I said I didn't know where you were. He said you were supposed to be in Hollywood on the story about Mr. Rowan's movie and his wife. Talk about New York. Mom, mm -hmm. I want to stay here. Now you go to bed. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Wait for me, Troy. trying to protect my friends. I sent you to pick up a document. I tore it up. The important thing is that you withheld it from us. You could say that. Our agreement stipulates that any attempt on your part to withhold information automatically triggers the dissolution of that contract. That's true, isn't it? Yes. Then we no longer have a contract. You broke it. What are you going to do now? I'll find another job. I understand you call Lifestyle today. They won't take you back. Well, there are other magazines. You know where you're going to live? No. You have to take your boy out of school now, won't you? Yes. I will. And that $3,500 that you charged to buy that coat. We'll have to settle that now that you're leaving us. You have the money? No. When will you...
you be able to pay it back? Look. McKee tore my coat. And you tore up the letter. What do you want, Mr. Fallen? I want not to have to fire you. In exchange for what? I want two things. First, I want to know that you want the job, and then I want your loyalty. I took you on faith the first time. Now I want proof. I want Ben Rowan's picture. Ben Rowan is dead? Yes, I know. I told the guard I was your sister. What do you want? I want you to trust me. What are you really doing here? I need your trust and your friendship. Be my friend again. Meg, Meg, this is what I'm doing here. They want me to take Ben's picture for the front page. I was up all night trying to think it through. Don't turn me away. I don't have anywhere else to go. Get out of here. I don't want to take this picture. Get out before I have the guard called and throw you out. Who are you talking to? It's me, Helen. I don't know you. Oh, yes, you do. You've known me for a long, long time. In our sophomore year, when you had sleepless nights, when you were trying to think it through, and I was up with you every night because I was your friend. I was your friend then, and I'm your friend now. Not my friend. Ben's friend. Not his friend. We three loved each other. We're past that. Then let's turn it around. Be my friend again. Please, what did I do? I took a job you told me not to, but what did I do? What did you do? After you killed him? What are you talking about? You're a whore. What are you talking about? I saw the story you wrote. I don't know what you're talking about. I never wrote any story. I had to put up my salary to get Ben a job. Meg North tells college roommate. No, 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 I never wrote that. I swear by Ben. She After all. 